Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. SoFi Technologies just reported earnings and man, it was a blowout. If you go through it, it's almost hard to find anything that wasn't great. We're going to talk about some specifics, what we think going forward, maybe some things to pay really close attention to. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. I got Jeff Santoro here with me, the voice of the people. Jeff, hey, man. I don't own SoFi. I don't follow it super closely, but it intrigues me, especially when I see a quarter like this. So just to hit some of the high-level numbers here, they've been growing their members in the 50% or higher range for the last couple of years now. And this quarter was no exception. Members grew 44% year over year. I mean, that's a slight deceleration from the last couple of quarters, but I'll take 44%. That's fine. Any, any bank in America would take that. Yep. They're growing their products, which is essentially just like accounts, right? That, that grew 43%. If you break down the products a little further, their lending products specifically were up 25%. Their financial services products is really driving that growth at 47% year over year. It, and then all of the other top and bottom line metrics are heading in the right direction as well. So I look at this at a very surface level and think, wow, this is a great company I have to own. But I know you are more familiar with it and you have a, a couple other things that maybe aren't as obvious that could also be uh, tailwinds for the company. So a couple things to talk about on the bank side and the financial services side, definitely a lot to like. You look at that growth, it's, it's really good. More people are coming to them for deposits, for high yield savings. They're able to take on those high yield savings because of their the way their loan book is structured. This is not like a traditional bank that, that has a bunch of mortgages. And you think about the Bank of America's and truest finance so many of those so many banks that have lots and lots of mortgages and refinances that happened in 2020 2021 that are less than three percent yielding they're kind of encumbered by those sofi just recently went into mortgage lending so it's a tiny part of their loan book so that gives them so much ability to continue to grow people are coming to them for the high yield that they're not going to get at really any of the traditional banks they can't afford to pay those those high yields that SoFi can, and that's really driving their growth engine. Now, remember too, that these results, this was the second quarter, we still haven't seen what's likely to be a pretty significant boost that we might, honestly, we might not really see much of until we get into the fourth quarter. We might see a little bit of it when they report the third quarter, but that's student loan refinancing. You remember, Jeff, anybody with a federal student loan has, they've not had to make a payment since 2020. And that's finally going to expire in September. But I think once we get into that point, this is a really big part of their business that is going to start growing again. Jeff, there's one other thing I want to talk about too that's important because SoFi has become more of a bank, but it's also a fintech too with a product called Galileo, the payments platform for other fintech companies. And growth is really slowed there. So it's going to be, I think it's important to continue to focus on this because this is an asset light, good cash flowing part of the business. And I think a lot of people, myself included, had anticipated that it would continue to grow at a pretty high rate, but we've seen total accounts actually come down a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that continues to play out. Taking all that in and looking forward, what do you think about SoFi? The stock is up a tremendous amount. If you go back to March, the mini banking crisis that we had, this is one of many banks that the price fell significantly. It was already well down from its um, from when it went public via SPAC. And it has really bounced back because the results have been great. So that's really positive. But it's still a small bank in the grand scheme of things. This is like a mid-sized regional bank in terms of the size of its total assets. And it's trading for, I think, a pretty reasonable price. If you value it based on book value is a good starting point for most banks. 1.7 times book value, somewhere in that area, in recent prices based on when we're recording this. And that might sound expensive compared to a lot of banks. But again, looking at the growth rates, you're going to pay a premium for a bank that's growing this speed. And again, also, it doesn't have branches, right? So at scale, it's going to be more cash efficient than banks that operate branches. So again, it should trade for a bit of a premium to book value for that too. So I think you add all that together, you think about, the catalyst we have coming with student loan refinancing and having an unencumbered book in terms of low yielding loans, I think it has a really great path to continue growing at a high rate. Jeff, I do have one concern that I think is worth mentioning and thinking about. The balance of its book of loans is 
student loan refinances and other personal loans. This is unsecured debt. This is unsecured high interest debt. The downside of that is when we eventually do see a recession, and at some point it's going to happen. It's going to happen, you know, this year, five years from now. Nobody really knows. But these are the kind of loans that do tend to see the highest default rates. I think investors do need to be conscious of that as a potential risk for SoFi. But as long as they continue to expand, diversify their book of business, I think it's well worth owning.